Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're talking about mathematical operations with rational expressions. And unfortunately, you're going to have to learn an entirely different system of math in order to do this. Everything is different. Everything is unique. Different language, different symbols. Nah, I'm only kidding. It's just like with numbers, except we're going to be using algebraic expressions. And we're going to learn to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. Which means we're going to have to understand the multiplicative inverse, and we're going to make sure we understand what to do with complex fraction, fractions. We may be asked to add algebraic rational expressions, or we may be asked to subtract algebraic rational expressions. How in the world do we do this? We, we do it exactly the same way we do it when we have numbers. If we had one half and we wanted to add two sevenths to that, we'd have to have a common denominator. And since two and seven are both prime numbers, we'd multiply the one half by seven over seven, and we multiply the two sevenths by two over two. Then we carry out that multiplication. We'd have a common denominator. We'd add our numerators. And our answer would be 11 fourteenths. Well, it's the same process when we're talking about algebra and algebraic symbols. We need to get a common denominator. I can get a common denominator here by using the denominator of each of the fractions over itself and multiplying it by the other fraction. For instance, I multiply a over b times the denominator of c over d, d, over itself. And I multiply c over d times b over b. And that simplifies to ad over bd minus bc over db. I've got a common denominator. And my answer is ad minus bc over bd. We can always get a, a common denominator by multiplying each of the fractions times the other fraction's denominator over itself. But sometimes we want a lowest common denominator. And in order to get that, we need to factor the denominators in each of our fractions. When I do that with this problem, I get 1 over 2 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3. Now, I see that each of these factored denominators shares one factor in common. They both have a 2. But the other factors for each of the fractions is unique, a 2 and a 3. So I know that my lowest common denominator is going to be that 2 shared by each of the fractions times the other 2 times the 3. 2 times 2 times 3 is my lowest common denominator. Now in the first fraction, I had to multiply the 2 times 2 by a 3 to get the common denominator. That means I've got to multiply my numerator by 3 as well. In the second fraction, I multiplied the denominator by 2. So I've got to multiply my numerator by 2. And when I simplify, I get 3 over 12 plus 2 over 12, or 5 over 12. It's the same process in algebra. I need to factor my denominators to come up with a lowest common denominator. When I factor these two denominators, I can see 
that each shares one factor in common, x minus 2. But then there are two unique factors, x plus 5 and x plus 4. So my lowest common denominator is going to have 1 x minus 2 in it. And it's going to be multiplied by x plus 5 and by x plus 4. In my first fraction, my denominator factor didn't have an x plus 4. So I'll multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 4. The second fraction lacked an x plus 5 factor. So I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by x plus 5. Now I can simplify that to x plus 4 squared minus x minus 1 times x plus 5 over x plus 5 times x minus 2 times x plus 4. I can simplify this further. I can carry out that multiplication in my numerator. And when I do, I get x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus the expression x squared plus 4x minus 5. Now, that minus sign is being multiplied by everything inside that, uh, inside those brackets. So I got to change the sign of everything inside the brackets. And after I do that, I can combine like terms. And when I do, I get x, 4x plus 21 over x plus 5 times x minus 2 times x plus 4. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, I think I need a common denominator, and I think I'm going to try to get a lowest common denominator. So I'm going to factor both of the denominators. When I do, the denominator on the left is c plus 2 times c plus 3. And on the right, the denominator is c plus 2 times c minus 2. Well, I can see, haha, ha, get it? I can see that I have one factor in common, c plus 2. And I have two unique factors, c plus 3 and c minus 2. So my lowest common denominator is going to be c plus 2 times c plus 3 times c minus 2. My first fraction is lacking a c minus 2. So I'll multiply both the top and the bottom by c minus 2. My second fraction is lacking a c plus 3, so I'll correct that. And now I'll just simplify all this, and I get c minus 2 minus c minus 3 over my common denominator. And then I can simplify it further, and I get minus 5 over the common denominator. Multiplying and dividing rational expressions is pretty easy, just like multiplying and dividing fractions is pretty easy. If I had to multiply 3 quarters times 2 thirds, it's just the two numerators times each other over the two denominators times each other. I may have to simplify my answer. 6 over 12 should be simplified to 1 half, but that's pretty simple. If I'm multiplying uh, rational expressions with algebraic symbols, it's the same process. I multiply my two numerators, and then I multiply my two denominators, and I get my answer. I may have to simplify the expression, but it's as simple as that. Division's a little trickier, but it's not that tricky. You got to remember the multiplicative inverse. You got to remember that if I'm dividing by one third, that's the same thing as multiplying by three over one or three. I can get rid of my one third and substitute a three over one and then multiply. And I get three times three over four over one or four times one or nine over four or two and one quarter. 
Same is true when we're using algebraic symbols. A over B divided by C over D equals A over B times D over C, which equals A times D over B times C. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, if I want to divide by a fraction, I need to remember the multiplicative inverse. I need to replace that division sign with a multiplication sign and flip or get the reciprocal of my second fraction. I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared plus 5x over x squared minus 81 times x plus 9 over x squared. And you can see that x plus 9 over x squared is just my original second fraction flipped upside down. Now, I got a whole bunch of stuff here that could be factored. I can factor that 2x squared plus 5x into x times 2x plus 5. And I can factor the denominator, x squared minus 81, to x plus 9 times x minus 9. So I can simplify this a whole bunch. I've got an x plus 9 in both my denominator and my numerator, so I can get rid of those. And I've got 1x in my uh, numerator and 2x's in my denominator, so I can get rid of the x in my numerator and reduce the x squared to a single x. And then this simplifies to 2x plus 5 over x squared minus 9x. Can you simplify this expression, x squared minus x, divided by x plus 1 over x minus 1? We call that a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction that has a fraction in either the denominator or the numerator, or both. Well, let's simplify this expression. Hit your pause button. Try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. All right, in order to simplify this, I need to carry out the division. And to carry out that division, I need to remember the multiplicative inverse. I'm going to, instead of dividing x squared minus 1 by that fraction, x plus 1 over x minus 1, I'm going to multiply x squared minus 1 times the reciprocal of that fraction. Now I've got x squared minus 1 over 1 times x minus 1 over x plus 1. Let's factor that x squared minus 1. That becomes x plus 1 times x minus 1 over 1. And my second fraction is the same, x minus 1 over x plus 1. But I can see I've got an x plus 1 in both my uh, numerator and my denominator, so I can get rid of those. And I'm left with an x minus 1 times an x minus 1 over 1. And that's just x minus 1 squared. Well, that's our lesson on mathematical operations with rational expressions. I hope it made sense to you, and I hope you learned a whole lot. Now it's time to go to mastermath.info, where you'll find worksheets and quizzes that will make sure you understand this concept well. I hope you had a good time, and I hope we see you again real soon.